Now our last video, I told you a brief description of what an necromancer does, and mostly how to create your own undead horde. This time we will cover spells to increase our power and keep our horde alive, and maybe a few of the less horde creating spells. So let's get started. First of the spells we want is Desecrate, either by item, scroll, spell, might be cheaper. This will give us an extra 1 HP per hit die and doubles that if there's a permanent altar or shrine there. This will let us raise 4 hit dice instead of 2 hit dice at a single time per level for us as well with our Animate Dead spell. Sculpt Corpses lets us reshape a corpse to look like another, even another person. But this does merely change the appearance of the corpse. Maybe we can use it to usurp a local lord, maybe even a king. There's some other little fun tricks with it. How about possession? Third to fifth level spell, you can get the ability to trap another person's soul inside their body while you take it for a spin. There is even a greater version of it where your original body kind of vanishes for the duration. That way, it's safe. Vampiric Shadow Shield. Fifth level spell that protects you by hurting anyone with outreach that performs a melee attack against you. 1d6 plus 1 damage per caster level and heals you for 1 fourth that damage. It's not a lot, but could be useful if you decide you want to wade into battle with your soldiers. Now, Contagion. Third level spell and a touched creature contracts a disease. Gives you a list to choose from for your diseases. You know, in case you don't have a plague zombie available, you can use this to infect a small town and get us some of those undead thralls without having to go through the trouble of killing each and every one of them yourself. General Repose is second level spell. Do you want to keep their bodies fresh? Maybe you want to. Maybe you just want to keep the smell down on your undead butler. This may help. Speak with the dead. Want a third level spell to help you find out a mystery? To ask the long-lost relative where the deed to the house is, or maybe you just want to make your favorite scene in your new favorite movie, this will help, but ask wisely. And your GM does not have to be as forthcoming with the information, but you could always start a detective agency and hire yourself out to the local PD for murders. Inflict Wounds. From light to mass, this spell chain will be used to keep your army alive and possibly your party if you plan it right. The third level spell, Vampiric Touch, can really drain the life out of a party, dealing some damage to them and healing you with temporary HP. Pair it with Spectral Hand and you have a disembodied hand that can deliver touch spells for you against anyone within medium range. There is a spell, Summon Undead. It's third level spell. Doesn't have any other spell levels to it or a spell chain, and has a limited number of monsters to pull from, but it's a undead summon spell. It's unfortunately also third party, so your GM may not allow it. Happen to be alive and want to see what undead is like for a minute a level? Well, undead anatomy spell chain is where you need to go. From diminutive to huge, you should find something to wear for your next Halloween party. Torpid Reanimation will create undead as animate undead, but you do not have control this time. But you do get to set a spell trigger. So maybe when someone's touching a corpse, a body, enters into a room, you can use these guys as a trap. Now, how about Magic Jar? Now, there is a time limit, and you should know it, or you're going to die. But with this, you can take over the body of any other, of not only a mortal, Maybe you want to sneak around in a new skin suit. But you can take over any intelligent undead. You can take over the physical aspects of the creature for a few hours. It can be a real boon for you. But sooner or later, you do have to give it up, unfortunately. You could also use it to just kill whatever monster you're fighting. So you can raise it later. Whatever. Also, spells like Visualization of the Mind or spells that increase your diplomacy could help you with your ability to sway the undead that you use with your Create Undead spell. Now, knowing what kind of spells you need and the abilities we're going to need, we can decide on what class we want to be. Now, lots of classes can be necromancers, witches, shamans, wizards, sorcerers, clerics, oracles, even anti-paladins. 
There are a lot of ways to cheese your Animate Undead and to start down the path. Some are better than others. Want to be a frontline tank with its own undead quarry, with its own undead squires? Well, an anti-paladin is a good pick. If not for you, then maybe someone in your party, a cohort. Maybe we can tip that paladin in the party to seeing things our way. Knight of the Sepulchre is an anti-paladin archetype that progresses a path to fully undead by the time they reach level 20. Sealbreaker is another with auras that help other undead, gains a bonded weapon, or an undead horse. That's right. The only thing better than horse is undead horse. He doesn't get the capstone as the last archetype, but at level 11, when something dies near him, he can spend a smite, raise it as a morgue, and for one minute, it will attack his enemies for him, so it's still pretty good. You can play a Gravewalker Witch. Get the beauty of hexing people and controlling undead. They get your needed command, animate, create, and control undead spells. Instead of a pet, they get a poppet, which is nothing but a doll made out of human skin, and you eventually can deliver touch spells as ranged touch spells through this doll. How about a free hit dice a level command dead like ability, and can even possess one of your own undead? Throw yourself in a backpack and ride around in your undead ogre mech. Alchemist Reanimator can inject a serum into a corpse and animate it as a zombie to control. They can create undead as a spell eventually as well. Bards with the Magician Archetype get access to command and animate undead spells. It's a great way to fill a dance party when no one else wants to come. Look at one of my previous videos on the Occultist. Take the Necrocultist. They can also take Necromancy Implements and get Necromantic Servant Implement Focus Power to gain temporary undead without using a spell slot. Its resonant power gains additional hit dice of undead for each point you put into the item. So that can equal a lot of undead if you're willing to go the distance. It's a great way to keep the necromancer and still keep the creepy theme and fun of the occultist. Plus, maybe put some deals with an outsider on the side. If you have not looked at the occultist, I did a video that covers their usage and powers. Psychics can even be necromancers. They can take Will of the Dead so they can inflict undead with mind affecting spells and can take something like mystical past life and add spells from another class wizard like animate dead and put it on their spell list. Sorcerers have bloodlines like the ectoplasmic ectoplasm bloodline if you want to be more ethereal than corporeal though it's probably more along the lines of being a ghost than a necromancer thematically you can make it work. The Undead Bloodline makes Undead susceptible to your mind-affecting spells, so that's good. There are several ways in a couple different classes that can do this. It's great no matter what, being able to confuse or control Undead with your normal spells, especially with spontaneous casters no longer having to worry about taking a spell then running through a bunch of Undead in a campaign and part of your good spell is not working on them anymore. You get a DR at level 3 to help keep you alive and it still can take an incorporeal form. All in all, it's not a bad choice if you're wanting to be a sorcerer. It also gets an unliving physiology option for its familiar, so it's affected and healed by negative energy as well. The Necrologist Spiritualist gets an undead phantom instead of an outsider. Undead creation spells, they can channel energy so they can command undead. As a cleric, but at three levels lower than a, your current level. Geist Channeler Spiritualist is another more incorporeal theme, but you can still control undead. Its manifestations are limited to incorporeal forms, gets telekinesis through poltergeist snacks, can shield itself from a threatening incorporeal creature, and can even possess the bodies of others. So it's got some really good thematic things going for it. Now if you're going to be a wizard, I suggest focusing on necromancy of course, and you're going to get the Command Undead feat for free. Hollowed Necromancers is another wizard archetype, but it's kind of the necromancer that wants to be the teacher's pet instead of make teacher the pet. Can't use Create Undead, and it's more of an anti-necromancer, so eh. Clerics are great, as with their channel ability, they can end up not only being able to command undead with their feet, but they can heal them as well, so you're not just stuck with the ability if you don't have any extra undead to get control of. The Undead Lord 
cleric archetype for them is good if you don't mind taking the death domain, and you shouldn't, but it will be the only domain you get. The archetype lets you create a corpse companion for free. You get command and dead feet, as well as another feat from a list in mid-levels. Unlife Healer gets an extra 50% healing on your channel abilities. That later advances to max healing with 50% on top. It's a great archetype to keep your armies alive. If it's not your cup of tea, you can and you can swing it. It's a great cohort to get with the leadership feat with hopefully a focus on undead healing. But that is one of those things that is entirely in the GM's hands. Want to try a Mesmerist? Try the Spirit Walker. She gets abilities useful against Undead, as well as gaining things like Command Undead, as well as Master of the Undead as her capstone. She can use Control Undead as spell-like ability on one target. If your target fails and has 20 or less hit die with this capstone, they are controlled for the life of the Mesmerist. They can only do this to one throw at a time, but it's still pretty good ability. I like the Oracle, specifically the Mystery Juju. Now, there are two different kinds of Juju Mysteries for the Oracle. One came out in Adventure Path number 39, City of the Seven Spears, in 2010. The other came out in 2013 in Faiths and Philosophies. I am specifically putting out a build for the first Juju Oracle to go along with this. Check with your GM. Not all will be as cool as me and will want you to take the newer one. I don't see an issue with either one. The reason I like the Oracle, yeah, I don't get the mass channel heal, which sucks, but I get some good mysteries, oracles are great classes, and you get Juju Zombies faster than anyone else by one or two levels. Juju Zombies are zombies with no staggered condition. They keep all their class hit dice. They get a plus three to natural armor, plus four to channel resistance, five damage reduction against, or to be beaten by magic and slashing with a bump to 10 DR if they have 11 hit dice or more. They're fire resistant 10, immune to cold, electricity, and magic missile for some reason. Winged creatures are clumsy in the air, but you retain all movement types, including if by magic. Attacks are the same as the base creature, and it gains a, slam, gains a slam attack. It gets plus four to its strength, plus two to its dex. It's got improved initiative and toughness as bonus feats. You will have to control it as we went over with the create undead ability, but it is a super solid choice. Now, after all that, if you're worried about keeping your army up, having them turn on you, take the leadership feat at level seven. This will give you a cohort an undead cohort, maybe even, or a monster that's applicable. If your stats are right, you should be able to have something that is close to your level by about two levels underneath you. And maybe it wants to be just like you one day. It's a big collaboration with your GM. He has the final say in all things about them. But try for someone who can heal your undead, who can bolster and buff them. It will save you money in the end, not letting them die all the time. Maybe it's an undead you raise to create undead yourself or maybe that's why they want to be around you they hope that one day you can make them immortal or bring back someone they love now i don't do much with prestige classes in pathfinder but if you're into prestige classes there is a necromancy prestige class for you agent of the grave it's not hard to get into by level five you lose one spell progression level you get to use your charisma instead of your con for bonus hp from that point further, can use spells on undead like Charm Person that normally don't affect them, Confusion and such. Can make Desecrate as the spell once a day. And all undead that are created by you are created as if they were created inside of a desecrated area. Level 4 and level 5, I'm iffy on. As level 4, you can, you can heal by negative energy and get non-detection once a day. 5th level gets you a spell if you normally don't have access to them, but you probably should already be playing something that has access to those spells. And then you get a bonus for checks to become a lich whenever you do the final DC for the transfer during the ritual. You should probably have that locked down though. If you're planning to do something that costs you 120,000 gold or whatever, you should have already prepared to make sure that you're not going to fail that DC and you're going to end up being a lich or whatever you're trying to turn into. 
races. Races can be humans as you may want the extra feats and you still get a stat boost. Depending on your goals, that feat will come in real handy. Um, Asimar for stats and other Asimari bonuses. They have some good racial feats, stats, abilities. It's just a good race. Plus, who doesn't want to play the Fallen Angel? Tieflings can work with an alternate race option. Uh, we can make sure and give them the stats we want, plus they have nice thematical presence along with good racial abilities and resistances. Really, anything you want that has a bonus to the stats that you need, it will depend on how thematic you want to be or what kind of alternate class ability the race gets. For an example, Oracle's alternate favored class bonus can be something like adding additional spells if you're human, get an extra one half damage on spells that deal negative energy damage if you're a hobgoblin. Races will be something that is specific to your build, your class, if you're going to be looking to pair on more than just good stats. If you want to be undead without going all the way, you could always be a Dampir. They are healed by negative energy too, and they've got some pretty good stats and abilities. Now, traits. For traits, there is an old standby for me, for a Pragmatic Activator. This lets you use your intelligence for the UMD skill. While this may not matter depending on what your build is, it could, and it's one that I always love to keep in my mind whenever I create a class especially any class that uses intelligence. Gifted Adept is one you will probably want though. You can pick a spell and it's treated as one caster level higher when you cast it. Can you say animate dead? We can increase our hit die before we even can cast the spell. How about Death Speaker? Gives you a plus two bonus on influence undead by command undead or just general diplomacy. Not bad when we're gonna have to try and persuade our create undead minions later. Since we're talking persuasion, let's look at Student of Philosophy. It lets you use your intelligence for diplomacy and bluffs. There you go, wizards. But only for persuading and deceiving others. You can't use it for rogue tricks or anything like that, but it's still another one of those that, if I'm using something without charisma, I love to use. Because a lot of times, if it's not a main class feature, I dump charisma. Fortunate sounds great, as it lets you roll twice on a spell or magical item with a randomized effect, and you get to pick which one of those rolls that you want to keep. Want a multi-class and worried about losing some caster level checks for your spells? Try Magical Knack. It'll boost your caster level to the max of your hit dice. You're not going to gain back any lost spell levels, but for things like Animate Dead, it's still going to help push you up to at least around where you should be. Inspired by Greatness does the same. It stacks, untyped, plus one caster level bonus to one spell, animate dead again. Outlander, plus one bonus trait, knowledge arcana, untyped, plus one caster level, and save DC's bonus for three spells. One of them obviously should be animate dead. Signature spell, untyped, plus one caster level bonus to one spell. Once again, if you're picking this, it's probably gonna be animate dead. Now there are a ton of good traits, but like so much, it's going to depend on your class, your archetype, if any, and your theme. But these I listed will be good no matter what, and you'll probably end up pulling from this list unless you're going for something far more specific. If you like this video, check out my others. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any tips or requests, drop them in the comments below. And until next time, may your crits be epic, your adventure is legendary, and your gaming table filled with laughter.